you can do that, just come up to the sides, kind of out of the way, and we'll do your swap from a non-DEFCON lane into a DEFCON lane. Okay, so, who here thinks the Rio rocks? Thank you. 
We know that the physical infrastructure is different than we've had before, so we're going to do some repositioning next year and get you even greater coverage. Some of you are doing things. Some of them are bad. We did find one road DHCP. Uh, server screwing things up on, I think it was Friday. We took care of that. <laughs> we didn't have enough on TV back in the hotel rooms. So, we got a lot of good feedback from you guys. It was uh, seemed to be well received. We know you also wanted to see slides as well. Um, the gear wasn't set up for that this year. We're already talking about how we can just blow this out of the water next year. So, consider this a dry run. Because after all, that thought was canceled. Instead, we just did the pre Deathcon 20. So, thank you very much, and uh, let's carry on. Can you hear me okay, guys? Yeah. Uh, the NSA. 
Tom Dressel from uh, Castro Packet. Uh, we're in our second year, and uh, we drew in a, a crowd of over 100 contestants. And by this size of this crowd, obviously, some of you aren't up to the challenge. Yeah. Well, hope, hope to see you next year. Yeah, and uh, yes, clear text for 100 points. DT's password was E A A A A H. <laughs> so this isn't uh, just another uh, solve the PCAP challenge. It's a live network traffic analysis game uh, that gave test contestants an opportunity to sniff millions of packets, um, discover clues, solve puzzles, and capture the packet. Uh, this year, Team Awesome, ca Team Awesome captured the packet, and uh, I wanted to thank our uh, all the teams that competed, all the volunteers that we had because it took a lot of volunteers to put it together, and our sponsors. And, and uh, our team, uh, Team Awesome, if you're here, you want to uh, have this for the next year. Thank you, DT. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. All right, so uh, next up is Track Me If You Can. Hi, I'm Rick, and I'm here with Track Me If You Can for Logic. Uh, this year was 123,000 password hashes, and they weren't exactly password hashes this year, they were password hashes. Uh, the winners were an insider throw from Russia. It was an incredibly tight match. Uh, for Russia, I know. Uh, uh, Seventy thousand passwords. Uh, good job. It was an incredibly tight match. Uh, them and the second place team, which is Hashcat, came in second. They got sixty-two thousand passwords. Good job, team Hashcat. Uh, they actually cracked thirty thousand of the bonus challenges, which are things like Zip and Office and XLS and PDF, etc. Third place was the John the River team, John users. Yay. Um, we actually gave thousand dollars in cash, but the teams were required to do a write-up of exactly how they did everything, their methodologies, their word list, and everything, so that we can all learn from the experts in Master Track. Uh, the only other thing I'll add is that the average, so they essentially cracked uh, half, half, 50% of the passwords that were generated. Uh, the average length of the password was 11.2. So that's fucking impressive. Thanks a lot. We hope we'll be back next year. Thank you, guys. Next up, we have Crash and Compile. Hey, guys. This is our second year doing Crash and Compile. It fucking rocked. It was off the hook. Thank you for everyone who competed and came out. I want to say a special thanks to um, Juice and MPR for helping me out. Thank you, guys. Um, I also want to thank Simple Wi-Fi and Well Space Labs for donating the prizes for this year. Thank you guys, that was awesome. I also want to thank uh, Team Distraction. They were more effective this year than ever. And you know how the game's played. Oh, mm, yeah, okay. Um, I love my job. <laughs> prizes, in third place was a four-way tie. Four-way fucking tie. Uh, fuck PBR. Psychoholics. Fuck you! Fuck yeah, Psychoholics. And Team Obsidian were the three competing teams, and then uh, we awarded points to uh, Team Distraction for any time that a point was not awarded to any of the other teams. And so they, they tied for third place. That was awesome. Thank you guys. Uh, in second, they all had five points. In second place was Random Dude Generator, which is a walk up team. They didn't know what was going on. They said, hey, that was some fun. We'll come up and do that. And they actually volunteered to submit, submit themselves to the D20 of randomness, so they didn't know which language they were going to be programming in until the die rolled. <laughs> they had 11 points. And then coming in first place was Team Frank Rules. Zero Farm. <laughs> Frank Rules had 12 points. They competed using a language that they had developed themselves, which is pretty cool. Go check it out, Frank. It's got a Wikipedia page. Uh, the prizes we have for them, we got a uh, Yagi antenna from Simple Wi-Fi and an Alpha uh, USB Wi-Fi module and the uh, Android ADK from Multispace Labs. Thank you, everybody. Uh, 
Uh, something we also didn't mention this year, the person who plays winners also get two human badges for next year. Next up, we have Matt Forensics. Hello, Neptun! Hi, Eric, the Network Forensics Puzzle Contest, and we had an unprecedented turnout for our second year as a contest. Uh, last year, we had roughly a little over 200 teams, but they were mostly individuals last year. This year, we had over, again, over 200 teams, but teams were comprised of between one and eight people. It was an insane amount of people competing, and what we're really happy about is we had a lot of people come stop by our contest and pick up the CD so that they can learn and practice for next year. We handed out over 600, and we've got a bunch more to the back. I'd like to name off the first top two teams. The team one, the one was 5154C, team two, C2I, and team three, Barnhouse Crew. So let's give those guys an applause for a great job. And uh, team one, we uh, got a network extender. Team two, we got a bunch of swag. Uh, Thinky gift certificate. Thank the uh, thanks to Thinky for that. And anyone that wants to practice for next year, networkforensics.com uh, or forensicscontest.com, you can have new puzzles throughout the year. So thank you. All right. Next up, we have Schemaverse. You guys are up here, Gun for running. Good job. <laughs> Alright, so this year we brought Scheme Reverse here, which was a database game that you actually played. It was a space battle. We had 108 players. I expected 10, so that was amazing. <laughs> Super happy about it. We actually had first place was Derpfish. Big congrats to him. He commanded a whole 467 planets. After that, the next person had five credits. <laughs> he got free admission to PG West 2011, which is the conference for Postgres. Runner-up got a free Navicat license. And after that, some people got some swag. So, can't wait to come next year. I hope to bring it back. Thank you. Next up, we have Hot Sauce for Jacqueline. So I'm looking for two uh, jalapeno peppers and candy for them, so I decided to run hot sauce for us. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to bring it up in flavor and hotness, and then I also want to get some judges to come and just, you know, have fun and just dig around and taste a lot of hot sauce. So um, it's we had a random walk-on entry who uh, was there for the ice cream contest. We were like, hey, wait, I've got some hot sauce in my bag. So we let us share a banner. And uh, he actually won for the best flavor. Um, it went to his prize entry, so it's called Scorchio by Fat Man Chili. And then we had a contest for the hottest, which was uh, by the Grand Bomb, final answer. Uh, Mariachi brought it. But then that got decayed by the judges because they realized it was ghost pepper extract, which is like, you don't want to go there. <laughs> and then so we gave it to the real hot sauce, which is like some crazy stuff called ghost pap, and then I got presented by Cryptic Scissor. Um, and then for judges, for like best reactions and just random humor, we gave it to the 400 kilo and to Vandal. And hopefully we'll come back next year and we'll do some hot sauce for us, uh, the homebrew version, so you guys get to make your own. Next year we are probably going to require a little bit stricter uh, medical documentation. We have a couple of people that... Uh, Ended up getting nasty, nasty blisters in their mouth. Next up, to help after you're done eating the hot sauce from Hot Sauce Wars, we have the Alcoholic Ice Cream Contest. I'm Yuthi. I uh, created the Alcoholic Ice Cream Contest. This is my first year um, to run an event. Uh, it's my second year at DevCon. A uh, big thank you to Par Pyro for allowing this to happen. Um, he, he's the one that uh, took a chance on me. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Uh, so, uh, thank you, Pyro. Um, you guys have no idea what this means to me. Um, okay, so uh, I got to thank a few other people. Uh, thank you, CJ, for giving me the 
idea at the term of me wanting to bring um, Kalak ice cream, the Kong, into a contest. Um, Pack and JJ for getting me liquid nitrogen and competing. Uh, Sharif for winning. Uh, it's his first year at DevCon. Um, I need to thank Noise for uh, letting me uh, prep my red form. Um, Tiffany, Terry, Peaches, Queen, and uh, um, for, for judging. Uh, Zara was my uh, MC. Um, Kaiser helped a lot um, uh, from home. And uh, everyone else has ever encouraged me. Thank you, it means a lot. Next up, we have Geo Challenge. Where are you, Geo Challenge? Okay. Alright, so on Syntax, I listed that Geo Challenge is the second year we did the contest. Uh, we're back from DEF CON 17. We had a little incident with some stuff being stolen last year, so I had extra time to make puzzles. And uh, we got really good results, uh, back, feedback from the contestants. We had over 24 teams sign up, uh, most teams were two to three people. We had over 60 contestants, and five teams actually finished the entire challenge. So our, our puzzles included everything from audio puzzles with tracks that were embedded to videos with subliminal messages, circuit boards that had to be traced out. Um, and no matter what we threw at these people, they managed to figure out like how to solve all these puzzles. So our winning teams, we had three teams. The first place team was Neko. The second place team, we actually had a tie. It was the Psychoholics and the Arrogant Bastards, which were back for the second year. They actually competed in the first year. The first place team got a package of Midbuster prizes. And the second place tie teams got an assortment of swag from the vendors. So thanks to all the vendors for your donations to our contest. Next up, uh, we have a brand new, well, not brand new contest, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Next up is Open CTF, uh, and this year the winners will be receiving up to five human badges to cover for their team for next year. And uh, just now stated by Jeff Moss, next year this will be a black badge competition. Alright, hi guys, thanks. Um, I'm Zach, part of the OpenCTF group, and this year uh, is our second year running it after taking over from DC949. It's the seventh year of the competition. So, uh, first thing I want to thank is all of our sponsors. Um, Spikers Electronics, Iron Systems, ACS, IX Systems, Palo Alto. Um, you guys provided all the network equipment and the servers for us to run this game on. Um, that meant a lot. Obviously, we couldn't have the game without you. All right, so more to the interesting part. Uh, third place winners for this year's CTF were uh, My Little White Hat. Second place was Team Dissect. And then first place, Team Band. We've also got another special prize for Team Band. Uh, that we confirmed with uh, the actual CTF staff. And uh, Team Band, if one of you guys wants to come up here. Uh, Team Band took first place for the second year in a row, and next year they have a guaranteed spot in the DEF CON CTF. for a lot of swag to give all the first, second, and third place teams. And we got a massive amount of that. So uh, thank you all the vendors for providing prizes for our competitors. And I think that pretty much wraps it up. Thank you. Next up, now, finally the new competition, uh, is the beer growing competition. 
competition. Hold on, uh, Red Beard, some of you may have me. Uh, it's my great honor to bring the, the worldwide sport of beard growing to DEF CON. Uh, highly, highly competitive. If I can get a couple of our uh, contestants to come up on, here on the side while I talk about this. Uh, I organized this with the full intention of there being maybe 20 people who were actually going to legitimately compete in this. You know, people stated this has got to be one of the dumbest ideas to ever happen here. Um, that being said, we had over 90 people enter the actual contest. We gave out over 12 prizes. These were some of the folks that you see. Penguino, step over here for a second. Penguino won the full natural beard. Oh, Jesus. She won the fake beard category with this. It's awesome. I'm so psyched. Thank you to everybody who worked, uh, helped and competed and everything else. And it's going to be happening again next year. You have a year of training. Let's see what people can bring. Thank you so much. I love that. All right, next up is our first Black Badge competition of the year, Social Engineering Capture the Flag. Okay, first things first, I'd like to thank all of our sponsors. We had uh, Qualys, Core Impact, Defensive Security, All Clear ID, which uh, sponsored the KISS CTF, and uh, of course, we can't do any of this without the EFF. The EFF, come on. keeping Logan out of jail since 2010. I think that should work, right? Okay, so our uh, second place winner for the Social Engineering CTF had to leave early, uh, Chris Silver, so we, we gave him his, his prize, he had to go, but a round of applause for him. Our first place winner uh, cleaned house by a landslide. I mean, it wasn't just a, a close um, a competition this year. He really did well. Shane McDougall, you want to come up? <laughs> we made a cool little social engineering toolkit for him. We have an uh, Android um, pad with Backtrack Pod loaded on it. That's cool. And some hidden cameras and pens and buttons and other crap. Um, Next up, we have Better Touring with Dee Audience. 
Uh, we're also going to have him talk about the awesome lock picking contest and Rio Warrior. All right. Yes. So, Rio Warrior. All the lock picking people who came out had a good time for that. Who saw some of that? I was there for most of that. Um, it was absolutely exceptional how many people we had come and play. We'll put a lot of the videos and photos up later. In the end, it was a really hard fought battle between people like Doug Farr, Shane, I think uh, it was Joey was up there at the top, Super Tank. But in the end, Dr. Tran, Dr. Tran the man. Can I have Dr. Tran up here? Who was like Joey? Shane, you're here. Super Tank. Do you have that black hat bag? Under the park. There we go. We only one. No one else wants their prizes, I guess. I don't know who's the only one up here. Is this in fact a uh, still awesome, an awesome contest this year? Is this a, yes. So, Tran, you would be able to choose from things like a DS or you know dual handcuffs or what have you or even one of those really awesome ninja big sets that Shane's wife made. But uh, being the first place champ, do you want to choose the black badge for your prize? All right, Dr. Tran, black badge. Doug Farr, second place. What would you like, sir? I'm going to choose the most expensive thing here. <laughs> All right. We'll play you were uh, Super Tape, you were either third or fourth. You're up here, so you get to pick. All right, Ninja Fix for you. I'll give these to the rest of the people. Thank you guys so much for coming out and taking care of you. Next up is one of the oldest and still one of my favorite contests, Scavenger Hunt. And everybody else in the vendor area, and a signed copy 
on a USB stick and a Microsoft Windows machine that did not have PowerPoint. <laughs> a quick, quick pre-award, the Humperdinck Award, is going to go to Hacker Jar for being the first person in Hacker Jeopardy history to barf three times in one game. Here's G Mark, you can tell you the results. Okay, 19 teams, 30 contestants played, 186 beers consumed, one winning team. A nice half grade doesn't begin the third year in a row, but it may not this year. A great team from Boston University and MIT, CSF Convention, and Vegas 2.0, who I think set the record for the worst performance of Vital Hacker Jeopardy at minus 2,100 points. <laughs> That home field advantage means nothing in this game. So anyway, Pop TFK, JP Terry, congratulations on your third win in a row, and black badges from DEF CON. Well Uh, we had uh, journalstatics.com, 
but uh, they went out of business and their domain got taken over by Domain Squatter, so our prize this year is a box of goldfish. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Next up, we have Packet Killing the Katana. Is that right? Yes. I believe so. Here we go. You guys uh, didn't notice this was the one where everybody was standing there just kind of doing this. <laughs> Pretty cool contest. Uh, thank you for all the players and girls of uh, Packet Killing the Katana. Um, our contest is Network Simpson Game, which named Packet Going to Katana. It's the first time contest at DEF CON. And this game is very easy to play that everyone can enjoy. It's special to enjoy to play. And uh, this game displays the image which is captured from DEF CON Network. And players cut the image by their arm. And the winner of the contest is Zoom. Z W N E D, and the prize for this uh, game is katana, and we will wait at the hallway. So please come to get the prize.
Oh, by the way, uh, next year, uh, learn some RH and some stealth. All right, so this year's CTF can be summarized as the following thousands of stolen flags. Um, 45, I think, uh, fish flippings, uh, one pwned sheep, and uh, <laughs> no angry birds. We continue to see an increased participation of international all across the world, both during walls and during uh, CTF itself. Major countries from all the, the continents are represented in both. Um, and we're excited to see this friend that you, you, the community, have created. And it's clear that this is the dominant CTF in the world. Um, and as Jeff is uh, explaining, next year we're expanding. We're going to add a couple more teams via contest. Um, and we're, we're, we're nailing down the logistics, but we're talking about expanding to 20 teams. So uh, basically at this point, Def Con CTF is the world championships for CTF. So we want to give a special shout out and to uh, Root Park. They've made a strong showing every year for a while. They got second place this year. They're very strong competitors. They were edged out towards the end of the game one more time. The winners this year for the Def Con CTF are Euro Knop Sled Team. Please come join us on the stage. While they're coming up, I want to go ahead and recognize uh, the DD Tech team. Uh, the court team is composed of Chris, Tim, Troy, myself. The extended team includes Brian, Steve, Kelly, Kevin, and Jared. Thank you for all your help. We couldn't do it without you. We love you, shouts, and all that stuff. And they're all over there uh, shooting t-shirts and stuff at you. So in addition to winning, they get the, uh, the banner from us, eight black badges, and eight leather jackets from Def Con. Okay, so to stay tuned with what we're up to, follow us on Twitter, DD Tech, or go to our website, www.ddtech.biz. Thanks again for a great con. See you next year. Just brought to my attention, Geek Geek has a discount code for you guys. It is DEFCON50. Use it. I think it's going to be good for the rest of the month. It's a pretty big discount. Next, we're going to move into uh, some more of the uh, special features that we do here as far as fundraising and uh, supporting the community. Uh, first up is Beat the Match. Um, the day that they gave me, unfortunately they're not able to be here, but the day that they gave me was that last year they had 175 signups. This year, 163. You guys kick ass. Um, this is an absolutely wonderful uh, program. You guys should definitely go look at it at BeatTheMatch.com. Uh, it's all about boner donor registry. Um, also, I have a special guest for you guys. Barcode.
my people. But it wasn't until I came to DEF CON that I realized that it actually found my family. And uh, this community, just watching it grow, over this, this is my 16th consecutive DEF CON, and watching this grow over the last 16 years uh, has been nothing short of inspiring. You guys filled up a blood donation truck so fast that the lady running it uh, got all emotional and said she'd never seen such an impassioned turnout. And that's how it happened. life-saving blood transfusions in the past two months. Uh, let me just tell you that it feels pretty incredible. I'm also very much happy to know that there's going to be a lot of people out there getting surprised drunk during their blood transfusions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this has always been a community that takes care of their own. I think we, we all know that. And, uh, but this is something else entirely. I, I don't have a lot of time. I, I don't know what to say. I mean, I even, I've got priest's blood in me right now, so I really feel like I have some sort of sense of authority or something. <laughs> uh, uh, just to keep it short, be, be very grateful that you're a part of this community, because I sure am. And never underestimate the power of the people in this room. To, to quote two wise men, just be excellent, excellent to each other. And from, honestly, thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Jason Strings, give us the details about blood code. Hello, everyone. Um, I have to tell you, it was the lady was like 96 people in less than an hour were ready to donate. She said she's never seen that kind of commitment, that kind of outpouring of support. And I said, what do you expect? We're hackers. That's how we roll. Okay, we're an awesome community and we help our own. And you didn't just help your own, you're helping a lot of other people. So remember, the blood is a very short-term thing, but it's like be the match to secure. It's like be the match.org is where you need to go. And hopefully everybody in this room will be uh, going to that website. They send you a kit. It's a cost job in the amount. It's like they put works in there this weekend. So it's like uh, do it and then send it back and then be the match. Uh, we've got one uh, grand, uh, one first prize winner. Grand prize is a healthy barcode, and healthy Mrs. Gattaca, and healthy everybody else that, that benefits from this. But the first prize winner is uh, Shepard 404. Can you come up here? He did an awesome epic picture at a blood donor uh, bank with the uh, uh, cutout barcode. As he was donating blood, wearing an IHAC charity shirt. So that was freaking epic. And he gets a uh, skateboard from Chris Summer, uh, signed by the Dead Con speakers. And he gets a $500 gift certificate from BumpMyLock.com. Also, Jeans, BumpMyLock, IBU. It's like they gave a lot of great prizes for everybody. So many prizes that everybody in the raffle wasn't a raffle and had a red ticket, you got a prize. So thank you, uh, the community, for all the stuff that you've done. And uh, here's your uh, skateboard. Next up, we have the various fundraisers. First up, EFF yeah, Summit. So 
within like 30 seconds I can explain what this is. It's a fundraiser for the EFF. It pretty much means how fast can we get money into the hands of the EFF in the shortest amount of time. And so we uh, do to entice people to actually show up and get 40 bucks to get in as we get as many speakers as possible to just show up and be there and be near you guys. You know, it's hard to find, especially when you got 15,000 people here this year, I think, somewhere in that neighborhood. So it's like, no, I know where the speakers can be. It's me right there. So just pay 40 bucks to go see them. And it raises money for the EFF. So, uh, and there's also all kinds of crap we give away and free beer that also brings people in. So let's get to the numbers. Uh, the EFF themselves, so $4,200 worth of stuff uh, just at the event, not counting what they did in the vendor area and other areas. Uh, we had an auction, which I always wait for everybody to get completely blitzed before I start the auction. <laughs> they tend to forget how much money they actually have in their bank account while they're bidding. So that helped a lot. We raised $2,940 just in the auction alone. And uh, at the door, this is like our new record. Every year we seem to break our record, and I think every year we're not going to do it. So we raised $14,785 at the door this year. to give away, we just started taking whatever's in your pocket, so <laughs> that's why it's not a round number. Uh, so just to give you guys a backdrop, we actually lost money uh, the first year. I paid for $2,000 a beer, we only raised $1,200 seven years ago, uh, and then we went from that to $22,000 this year total, raised in approximately four hours. as of this year, we're the largest freestanding fundraiser for the EFF uh, globally all year long. So that's next to you guys. So, um, I don't know what else to say uh, except for to make a special point out to little Jenny here. You can come forward for just a second. So uh, it's been really hard doing this and all this other stuff that I do to help out. And so she's been the executive admin of the summit. And every year that she's been here, the Funds have doubled year over year, and then she's been doing for four years. So, very big, big This is a lot of time, so we can just ramble about stuff right now. I'll give it back. But one thing I did want to mention that wasn't mentioned during uh, Be the Match is the biggest fear of people not doing bone marrow is because they think that it's going to be painful or there's a problem, and they listen to stuff that was literature from the 50s and 60s. Uh, my son had a bone marrow transplant three years ago, and it was because of a gracious donor, and I can always just appreciate anybody that actually puts their name in the hat and sees that they're a match. And when you do do it, there's no real pain. The little pain that there is, they give you an aspirin while you're doing it. So really, I mean, if that's your big fear of being in pain to save somebody's life, I mean, one, I wouldn't even consider that, but two, it's not even a painful process anymore. So please, if you have an opportunity, sign up and get on marrow.org. Thank you very much. Next up, Mohawks. Hi, I'm Ed from MohawkCon, and uh, last year we raised a whole bunch of money for the EFF, so we figured this year we'll change up a bit and let you guys choose who you donate to. This year we raised $2,314 just for the EFF. $544 for Hackers for Charity. And then we did a, uh, a Hackerspace challenge where a few Hackerspaces from around the country in Canada had to create a box to entice your donations. Uh, Heat Sync Labs out of Phoenix, Arizona raised $103.25. Denhack out of 303. Raise $129. Soul Space out of Winnipeg, Canada, raised $132.45. And then Alpha One Labs out of Brooklyn, New York, raised $583. So the grand total is $3,805 that you guys donate. Who got a Mohawk at Mohawk Con? 
stand up. Thank you to you guys and my cutting crew that helped me out this entire time. Oh, boy. You know, I'm lucky. That's my lovely wife. <laughs> Next up, we have Mark with his shooting and an overall of what he's been doing with the EMF over the last year.
more than likely checks in the room. Um, but I want to thank EFF for, for playing uh, so well with us for so many years and uh, really representing a lot of the things we think in. And it, it, if you don't like the EFF, yeah, that's fine. Not every advocacy group is perfect, but um, I like distribution, and so I distribute some in here and some in there, and it just so happens that EFF generally gets most of it. <laughs> what am I going to say? So thank you very much.
And there were a number of nights where he would just be working, I'd be working, and we would just be on camera with each other just to keep each other awake, to the point where Nikita now accuses us of having a bromance. <laughs> but yes, this would not have happened without Neil's assistance and help, and the things that you found in the program and the signs on the floor. I would do some completely lame sketch and hold it up to the camera and Skype and go, can you do this? And then he would produce some amazing things, like, I, I absolutely love the decal on the floor up there. So, for those of you who are curious about the floor decal, it was a simple substitution cipher that was the key for it. However, the number sequence was also something called a Ronson sequence. Um, a lot of people missed that. Uh, any mathematicians in the audience? Yeah, so there were some Easter eggs for you guys out there, too. The badge numbers themselves are a number sequence known as EMON, with the exception of the H3 badges. If you have an H3 badge, raise your hand. Okay, so as far as the game is concerned, you are the evil bastards who infiltrated the, the covert channel of communication. So, how many of you saw the digital logic pieces that were in the mid-hallway part and wondered just what the hell, you can't put Chinese characters into a digital logic gate? Well, I can. <laughs> During the DEF CON 101 talk, I continually repeat, refer to myself as narcissistic. That's because those digital gates out there were all representations of narcissistic numbers, which are numbers if you take them and cube all of the individual digits and sum them back together, you produce the original number. Which is a wonderful thing in a puzzle game because people would run the number through this digital logic gate series, produce the same thing and say, what the hell? <laughs> so for a three digit or n equals three narcissistic number, there are only four solutions. So they had three of them. The part of the puzzle for there was to solve the fourth. The lanyards are probably my favorite this year. Um, they are functioning PDP-8 code. Any of the old, old folks out there, they are from the front switch panel input register. <laughs> um, there are PDP-8 emulators out there on the web for free. If you choose, you can run them. The badge, the lander code also was a bit masking for that phrase that was in the program that actually led you to a website on the DEF CON sites. And I don't know, Jeff, if you saw the traffic. I know that some teams actually brute forced some of the web pages because Jeff came to me at one point and goes, yeah, I'm seeing a strange amount of hits at the DEF CON .org sites. I was like, yeah, they're probably brute forcing. So there were, there were a lot of other things involved. I want to just at least have a representative from one of the, te from the team that came up. The team that actually won, they solved and had the full complete solution today, a couple hours before the award ceremony. And it was actually these teams combined to form a epic Voltron-like team. So, so they are teams I Am Grifter, Team Still Awake, Team Bruce Willis, Team 1057, Team Subwire, Team 4, and Team Yen. And together I asked them, I said, what is your team name combined? Is, is this collective? And they go, oh, we could be the collective. And then one of the other members goes, no, the name of our team is fucking lost. <laughs> talk to each other and make friends. I hope that was successful. I hope you did. I hope you interacted with other people. I hope everyone at least had a little bit of enjoyment. And um, I look forward to... Yeah. Oh. I wasn't going to tell them that. Because... So, for those of you who are unaware, um, I haven't been officially asked, but... Uh, I do believe that there may be some carryover into next year for DuckCon 20, that we may have seeded some things in this year's um, badge competition. So, yeah. um, no, no shit. Learn how the Enigma works. <laughs> so, I, 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 one more time, who had fun at least doing some of the badge?
people who came up to me and said, I do believe this is the single most people that participated in a single event at the Con. I'm not sure if that's the case. I'll talk to Jeff about that later. But I also believe this is the single most screwed with competition in the history of DEF CON. That the amount of misdirection... And, yeah. So I, I, I had somebody come up to complain to me and said, you realize people are making fake things and fake uh, actions and posters and stickers. And they go, and I want to know what you're going to do about it. They said, I'm going to shake their hand. They said, I'm, I said, I'm going to shake their hand and, and, and thank them for having a good time because this is, in fact, DEF CON. <laughs> So, if you're a security professional, and you think someone's not going to screw with you in the middle of a competition like this, then you're just naive. Hi, I'm Vivian, and I'm here to present a special last-minute award on behalf of the Goose Squad. We have specific instructions, if anyone came up to us as part of this uh, challenge, to troll them as hard as possible. <laughs> And boy, did we succeed. Um, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> so, but I gotta say, out of everyone here, there was one person who absolutely stood out. We trolled, I don't know, three, four hundred people who would come to us asking us to clarify a clue or find someone for them, but there was this one guy. No matter how many false quests we sent him on, no matter how many times we told him to go bug, we sorted out. No matter how many times we sent him from one end of the convention center to the other, he never gave up. The guy's tenacious. It's like he's looking for Sarah Connor. So, the, the Goon Squad put this together, Night X back there donated this. It's a Stellaris uh, TI development kit, a board and software. Hot Flung, come up here and get your prize. Big round of applause. And on a quick side note, yeah, I'll look at Mystery Challenge next year. The last year, supposedly. And there'll be 20 teams for DEFCON 20 Mystery Challenge. Yeah. Okay, that is it. We are back here rocking July 26th to 29th. Book your rooms now. We're going to get more room locked, so there'll be more space here. And uh, thanks a lot. See you guys at the bar.